Alright, today I'm going to go over how I built my plasma speaker uh, that you saw in my previous videos. Um, so I've looked through several plans online trying to find the best one and I came across Joseph Bogan's site some time ago and uh, I like it the best. Um, so he has, he has a couple of really really cool uh, high voltage uh, projects on it. Um, so he had a uh, quasi-resonant high-powered monster 555 timer flyback plasma speaker and it's really awesome um, so I'm gonna go over uh, he mentions a couple of changes that you need to do uh, in in order to make a, a 505 timer plasma speaker out of out of this schematic a couple of improvements he uh, dictates uh, in the in the text for this projects page um, so I'm going to annotate it visually off the schematic he offers uh, on that project page just to show you uh, visually some of the changes that you need to make they're they're not big changes um, and they're quite worth it. So first thing to notice is the flyback transformer he uh, depicts over here has this EHT diode, this high voltage diode that you have to add on to it. I think he's assuming that this flyback is AC so he basically wants you to rectify the AC flyback to DC so he's adding a high voltage uh, diode but I guess not like 95 percent of the flybacks you're gonna get out of televisions nowadays are modern DC package varieties and they already have an internal high voltage diode so you do not need this if you do if you have a DC flyback and most likely you do have a DC flyback on your hands. Um, in the lab I'll show you uh, the difference between the two, uh, but you uh, be fairly confident that you have a DC flyback. Now, uh, another major change to this schematic is... So, he's basically saying that if you look over here the driver voltage is about 12 volts off this power supply so this 12 volt power supply is delivering 12 volts to both the 555 timer and 12 volts to your primary coil uh, wrap, uh, wrapped around uh, the ferrite core of your flyback 12 volts uh, at the primary coil will, will result in some measly sparks. I mean, I guess they're satisfying, but they're they're not uh, they're not very big. So basically, what he's saying is instead of just putting 12 volts and using one power supply, just sever this connection over here. So sever the connection from the uh, from your power supply to the um, primary, and instead, just add a second power supply over here. And with that second power supply, you could put in as much voltage you want across the primary. So even 30 to 40 volts would work. That's way too big. Um, so that's too small. Yeah, so 30 to 40 volts will, will work. Uh, it will the MOSFET will get quite hot at 30 to 40 volts. So if you want to run it for a given amount of time, 20 volts is, is more than enough um, and it'll sound pretty good. Um, so yeah, so that's that's probably the major modification to this whole thing. Um, also the ground of this power supply, so here's the positive. Positive is going to your uh, pr the primary coil. The ground uh, of, this of this power supply should go to your common ground of this power supply. So all, so it's a common ground. Both power supply negatives attached to each other uh, for common ground. Um, now, what else do we have over here? Um, this diode over here, this ultra-fast uh, 4007 diode, um, is required. Over here it says, if RC1 is unused, bypass this. Um, so he's saying bypass this diode and resistor if you're using a resonant capacitor across your primary coil over here. I recommend you do take some effort in finding a nice value of capacitance for your resonant capacitor because the arcs will be massive once you hit that value. So uh, my recommendation is to use an ultra-fast diode and use an 800 uh, ohm resistor and find a nice uh, capa uh, capacitance. Uh, over here he recommends that the resonant capacitance will probably be in the region of 220 nanofarads to 1 microfarad. Uh, do not use um, do not use electrolytic ca caps here, use only uh, high quality polypropylene caps. I use, uh, my cap is 400 volts which tends to uh, stand um, the higher voltages doesn't get as hot as a 200 uh, volt capacitor would, but I don't think I don't think it really matters. The value matters much more. Um, so for my specific 
uh, in my in my case, RC1 for me was RC1 was 0 0.27 microfarads. And uh, yeah, so it's not UFOs. Why does it suggest UFOs? Doesn't it know? 0 0.27 microfarads for my resonant capacitor, and that seems to work nicely. Uh, but like I said, uh, it depends on the flyback you have, it depends on the voltages you're using, and it depends on the number of turns of your primary coil. So you have to play around with it, but it's quite fun to play around with it and find uh, find that uh, resonant frequency when there's just a huge boost in your flyback secondary output. Um, also, one more thing, this 800 ohm resistor value is a uncommon value. I couldn't find an 800 ohm resistor ever, anywhere. So what I did was I, I wanted to find something that's going to get as close as to 800 ohms as possible. So what I used in this case was I took two resistors, I took 820, 820 ohm resistor in parallel with a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor. And this came out to, if you do the calculations, it's 800.118 ohms. So very, very close by, uh, insignificant. Uh, so these are the two resistor values I used uh, in order to make up 800 ohms. And I think that's, no, there is one more thing I do want to talk about, and that's the type of MOSFET he shows here. I didn't use IRF5 something or other. Um, I used... I used an IRFP 250, or you could also use IRFP 460s. These are uh, high, high powered, high voltage MOSFETs that have quite a high current rating. Um, IRF 460s uh, are probably unnecessary. They're, they're more expensive than the IRFP 250s. Uh, so I'd go with the 250s, that's what I'm using currently. And I've had, in very rare cases, does this MOSFET uh, fail. Um, it generally fails by, you know, putting in too high of a voltage of the secondary uh, power supply that you're using across the primary. Uh, this tends to get very hot. Uh, this heat sink is vital. Don't just heat sink with a small thing. I mean, use a big, chunky heat sink for just one, one <laughs> for just one transistor. This thing gets really hot. It's a very inefficient driver. No offense to Joseph Bogan. There, all plasma speaker drivers are fairly inefficient, and this generates a lot of heat. So you want a large heat sink. Um, so that's it. I'm not going to go over how to build this, uh, how to breadboard this. Um, I assume, I assume you know. Um, it's a fa it's fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, driver to build. Um, however, I will uh, show you in the lab some of the inputs and outputs on this thing and I guess how to make the driver nice, uh, how to make the driver modules and where the wires go that are going to connect to your MOSFET and you know which alligator clips are going to connect to what to connect to your primary coils. So I'll show you the layout of, of, of how I did it and um, I also have a nice trick for this audio input over here. A lot of people mess around with headphone wires but I found a way around that that's very reliable and you could actually remove the wire without breaking the whole soldering point over here. Alright, so let's go downstairs to the lab and I'll show you how everything works.